React Router, a library for managing navigation in React apps. It allows you to create a single page application with multiple views or pages without reloading the browser. It works by matching the URL in the browser to specific components in your app. To start learning how to use React Router in your React app, let's first create a React app using Vite. And then let's go into our terminal and type npm install and then a React Router DOM. This will install React Router in our project. You can go to the package JSON file to ensure that your React Router is updated to the latest version. After that, let's go to our main file to set up our React Router. Here, let's first import the create browser router function from React Router DOM. It is used to define all the routes in your app and how they connect to components. It uses the browser's history API, like the address bar, to manage navigation between pages. For example, inside the array, let's add an object. And inside this object, let's define a key named path. This key will have a string value of slash, meaning that this path will be the index or home page of our app. After defining the path, let's now define the component that it will render. In our case, this will be the app component. This setup enables us to create multiple pages with different route names very easily. For example, the slash dashboard path will render the dashboard component, or the slash about path will render the about component. After defining our paths and pages, let's also import the router provider from React Router DOM. This is a React Router component that makes your routing setup work. It connects the Create Browser Router configuration to your app, so React Router knows how to handle navigation. It takes the router object, which comes from what we defined earlier. Without Router Provider, your routing setup won't function. After completing our setup, let's run our React app by typing npm rundev. On the home path slash, we can see our home page, which is rendered by the app component. If we add slash about after the slash, it will navigate to the about page, which serves the about component. Similarly, on slash dashboard, we can see the dashboard page rendering the dashboard component. But what if we go to a path that we haven't defined? For example, if we navigate to the slash login page, we will see an unexpected application error that says 404 not found. A 404 not found is an HTTP status code that means the browser tried to access a page or resource on a server, but the server couldn't find it. It's the internet's way of saying, the page you're looking for doesn't exist. To customize this page and improve the user experience, we can create a not found page component. In this component, we can have a heading one saying, this page doesn't exist and a button that says, go back home. If you look closely, we have a new component here called link. This component comes from React Router DOM, and as its name suggests, it acts as a link. For example, this link component can route the user to the home page using the to property. Before you judge link as being the same as an anchor tag, the difference between link and an anchor tag is their speed. For example, if your user has slow internet and they click an anchor tag, it will be slow because the browser reloads the entire page. However, if it's a link component, the navigation will be instantaneous. After designing our not found page, let's return to the main page setup. Below, let's add another object where the path is defined as an asterisk and the element is set to the not found page component. This path effectively handles any URL that isn't explicitly defined in our create browser router setup, directing users to our custom not found page. For instance, if we navigate to a login page that isn't specified, we'll see the not found page we've designed, which helps us redirect back to the home page. After learning how to easily define your page and child routes, let's now dive into dynamic routes. A dynamic route in web development is a route that can accept variable parts in its URL, allowing it to handle different data or content based on the value provided in the URL. Have you ever wondered how Instagram, Facebook, or Google manage so many pages? They couldn't possibly create a new account page every time someone signs up, right? Let's understand how dynamic routes work in real-world development through a scenario. For instance, let's go to the main file and define a new route. You'll notice the colon before ID. This indicates that the route is now dynamic and can change or adapt based on input, context, or user interaction. As opposed to being fixed, you can name it anything you want, like ID, project name, or product ID. After defining the path, let's use the dashboard items component to display this dynamic page. Next, let's go to the dashboard component. Inside it, we'll define an array of objects, each with an ID and a title. This will serve as sample data for demonstration. Now, let's define an unordered list. Inside this list, we'll map over the dashboard items array and create a list item for each object. Inside each list item, we'll display the title using an heading to tag. Here's the key part. Wrap the heading to element inside a link component. Remember, a link works like an anchor tag. The link component will have a to property that uses a template literal to create the dynamic path. This creates a clickable link for each dashboard item. If you go to the slash dashboard page, you'll see the headings as links. Clicking on a link will take you to a page with the corresponding ID. 
For example, slash dashboard and then slash two is for the project page. And then slash dashboard and then slash three is for the teams page. Currently, the dynamic route serves the dashboard items component. Let's add more functionality to it. Inside the dashboard items component, import the use params hook from React Router DOM. The use params function returns an object containing key value pairs of the dynamic parameters from the current URL. For example, if the route pattern is slash dashboard slash colon ID, and the URL is slash dashboard and then slash one, two, three, then params.id will be one, two, three, which in our case, in the teams page, which has an ID of three, calling params.id will return three. This allows you to dynamically display content based on the parameter value. Now, where do we use this? Imagine that instead of mapping our own array of objects, we replace it with data from an API. For example, let's use the API provided by JSON Placeholder. This API provides fake data for testing and prototyping, including users, posts, and to-dos. Here, we'll fetch the list of users and map them into clickable links so that when you click on a user, it navigates to a page showing their associated to-dos or other details. First, we need to fetch the data. Inside the dashboard component, use the use effect hook to fetch the list of users from the JSON placeholder API. Now that we have the users, let's map them into a list of clickable links. This will create a dynamic list where each user's name is displayed as a link. Clicking on a link will navigate to a dynamic route like slash dashboard and then slash one for the user with ID one. In the dashboard items component, use the use params hook to get the user ID from the URL. Then let's fetch the to-dos for that specific user from the JSON placeholder API. Use a template literal to include the ID variable, ensuring it fetches the path containing the user's items. Additionally, let's include the ID in the use effect dependencies so that every time the ID changes, the data will be fetched again, making the app more responsive. Now, the app is fully dynamic. This method is flexible and works with any API, making it a practical and efficient way to build dynamic interactive web apps. You can practice using React Router by building small web app projects and implementing dynamic routes in them. We covered a lot of topics today, which is why we created a PDF version of this video. It's free, but we'd really appreciate it if you supported the channel. You can find the link in the description below. Also, this is just the first part of our React Router series. There's still so much more to discuss, so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. That's it for now, Novas. Comment down below what you'd like to learn next. Thank you for watching.